everybody, and welcome here to the Brawl for All Pro Wrestling Show special episode. It's going to be a commentary track with C Dub from Chronicord Media joining me. Yo, yo. And we are going to be doing 19. What year is it? 96? 1995. WCW. 1995. WC. I thought we changed it, but it's going to be the 95. So. Yes. Okay. 1995 World War Three WCW is thought to be interesting. Oh, this the old is 60 man three ring battle royal. This is going to be a winner. We got the Hulkster in the full red and yellow out here doing the old podium interview with Mean Gene. Hulkster does not have his mustache. I remember this. The yeah. Dungeon of Doom shaved his mustache off. <laughs> this is a. Uh... Pretty soon before the hill turn here. Yeah, this is uh, right around that time whenever Hogan started doing that weird thing where he ditched the red and yellow and started wearing, like, all black. And he was kind of uh, maybe teasing that heel turn that would come yeah, later that. with the NWO, man. But it was pretty crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, this, uh, of course, the World War Three event, this 1995 one, was the first WCW World War Three. And 1995 was the first year that WCW ran pay-per-views every month, if I remember correctly. Um, and the main thing about World War III is it was in January, strategically placed, as the Hulkster rips his shirt here, uh, strategically placed for competition with the Royal Rumble. And I'm thinking that the idea behind this was, well, there's three rings, 60 guys... It's going to be way better than the Royal Rumble, and people will order it. Yeah. Now, i got to say, back in the day, I remember ordering this event and the Royal Rumble, uh, I believe in 96. I don't think I ordered this one live. Um, but, yeah, this was an interesting time for WCW. Yeah, it was interesting. They were trying to push the envelope, it seemed, Indeed. around this time. This was right around when, uh, was Nitro on the air yet? Uh, yeah, this was like a couple months after Nitro came on the air, I believe. We got all... Okay, so here, there we go. Hulkster just said I got the red and the yellow back on. So this was just after he lost the title. Okay, so this wasn't a January pay-per-view. That's right. Originally it was, uh, it was I think, like November or something then. Because this had to be right after Halloween Havoc 95. Right. Whenever the giant, they had that infamous monster truck match. Boy, that was yeah. a real winner. Good lord, that was a I stinker. Wore the black and then. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, this World War Three was an interesting concept, man. I gotta say, uh, I remember that Hogan monster truck. <laughs> oh yeah, the monster truck match. That was one of the first pay-per-views that I had really ever ordered back in the day of myself at my own house. Here in uh, Tennessee, they didn't have really widespread pay-per-view where I lived until about 95. So uh, I think Halloween Havoc 95 might have been one of the first. There we got a nice shot of Bobby Heenan and Tony Jabroni Shivani holding the big gold with Hulk Hogan's name on the nameplate. Boy, that's kind of strange to see, huh? Yeah, since Ric Flair had it on there in the WWF. Right, it's like... Did they just get the belt back a couple years earlier? I think so, yeah. I mean, by this point, uh, Flair had returned. He returned in, I think, 93? Starcade 93? Back with him, I think. I believe so. I don't think they actually used it for a while because they were using it... Oh, my goodness. Here is Eric Bischoff. And they were using it as the national champ. Or yeah, it, yeah, it was the WCW International Championship or whatever. We got du- we got the American Dream Dusty Rhodes here along with Eric Bischoff. There were three commentary teams, one for each ring. Dusty Rhodes here wearing a red, what appears to be a Michael Jackson Thriller jacket with <laughs> snake skin on the shoulders. This is fancy and a bolo tie. I love the uh, sheriff star there. Yeah, the the the. the, the Sheriff's Badge Bolo tie there. That, this is before Bischoff came off air as the owner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was, uh, you know, a couple years into Bischoff's tenure. He was running the show by this point. Who else we got on commentary? Oh, this is a rarity. Chris Cruz, who hmm. 
really was a pretty good commentator. I, I don't thought. remember him too much. He he did a lot of work on the uh, weekend shows, sort of. And then uh, joining him, of course, is the living legend Larry Zabisco. Always a favorite there. Good old Larry Z. This was uh, pretty well after the end of his career as a regular in ring. In, whoops, dropped something there. Sorry, guys. As a regular in ring competitor. Um, but yeah. Nice shot here of the three rings. Think of how many seats WCW lost and how much money they lost from having to set up three rings like that. Yeah. Here we go, the entrance. Yeah. Arn Anderson, number one out. Das Wunderkind, Alex Wright. Oh, yeah. uh, here comes big nasty boy Brian Knobs. Yes, sir. Who's this here? It's like a... The Barrio Brothers. I remember them. Squire David Taylor. We got an Armstrong, Steve Armstrong, Scott Armstrong. There's the Stinger, fresh off his match with Flair. Jumping Joey Mags. Oh, good old Pistol Pez Watley. Then the, the Disco Inferno. Oh, Disco Inferno. And right behind him is Ming. Aku. Stevie Ray. Who's that? Who else? Mark Starr. Oh, boy. Buddy Lee Parker and Lieutenant James Earl Ray, the State Patrol, one of my favorite jobber tag teams. Narcissist. Narcissist Lex Luger. We got Eddie Guerrero, Eddie. the Cobra. The Big, Cobra, huh? The, Big Giant. The Mr. Wonderful there. Chris Canyon. Bobby Walker, hard work Bobby Rocker, followed up by Bobby Eaton. and Squire. Uh, or, yeah, Earl Robert Eaton, Chris Benoit, Macho Man Randy Savage, Marcus Bagwell. That uh, is uh, and American Uh oh. It's the Yeti, but he's wearing a ninja outfit. He's the giant ninja. Kuras yeah, who's that? Kurosawa, we got Hugh Morris, the Zodiac. Yes, he was great. V, uh, Mr. Wall Street, Diamond Dallas Page. Graham Bow's dead. Uh, Scott Flash Norton, there's, here we go, Four Horsemen, Brian Pillman. Ooh, Pillman, awesome. Craig Pitbull Pittman, the one-man gang. Super, super awesome. the Super Ninja. That Mr. was Barbarian, right? Mr. JL, Jerry Lynn, Bunkhouse Buck, Mike Winter, the Shark, another Armstrong, Road Warrior Hawk. Good old Dave Sullivan is in this. Scotty Riggs, Johnny B. Bad, Big Train Bart, Lord Steven Regal, Dirty Dick Slater, Max Muscle, Super, Super Assassin 2, the other Barrio brother, Warlord. Tiny Little Assassin Kevin Assassin. Sullivan, Sags, right. Duggan, Booker, Big Bubba, who else? Oh, the Nature Boy. And the 60th man out, Jeff, I'll let you call it. The Hollywood one himself, the Hawkster, the Immortal one, brother. Hogan, brother. You're gonna have to be careful using those WCW or excuse me, WWF copyrighted terms on WCW television because. Oh, sorry, the Immortal one. No, nah, no, nah, you had to call him. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, he's American made. What was the theme song or whatever? I don't think they could ever. American. Did they he's even? An American man. Did they even work? Just call him the Hawkster. I think so. It was the Hulkster. I mean, they didn't all really ever like call merch. him the Immortal. Yeah, all of his merchandise just said the Hulkster. Yeah, I think so. It never did call him the Immortal Hulk Hogan, which I thought was tight in WWF. So there we got the nice overhead shot here. If you guys, are I got every nickname that you ever called him in there, except the Incredible. That's right, that's right. Well, we got a nice overhead shot here. Michael Buffer on the stick announcing everybody three I always rings. Always like when they when they uh, how much did they pay for him to like a million out? bucks or like half a mil or something crazy. He made more, he made more than everybody in the ring there. Ridiculous. There's a the behind him to the right. That is the Cuban assassin Fidel Sierra, I believe, wow. who uh, lives in the Tampa Bay area. I've seen him on a couple of indie cards. There we got referee Randy Pee Wee Anderson holding up that big gold belt. All right, there. Well, well, we, How come we got Hawk and no Animal. You know, I think Animal was still out with the back injury at this point. I believe this was during the days whenever Road Warrior Hawk was teaming with 
Kensuke Sasaki as the Power Warriors over in Japan and in WCW. Um, it's funny that the Super Assassins were the uh, Powers of Pain. Really? Yeah, that's that's I, Barbarian and uh, Warlord, bro. I did not know that. Yeah, now look at them and you can tell. Yeah, I guess so. So I if, love Super Ninja. So what? So if you guys uh, listening to this want to sync up, we are watching this on WWE Network. I'm looking at the ticker right here. The action's just got underway in World War 395. We're at two minutes, uh, or excuse me, two hours, four minutes, and 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 seconds. So if you want a sync point there, I know we uh, didn't really get into that at the beginning, but you can... Pretty much just go to the start of World War Three ninety five. You got a little Hogan interview there, a little video package, and then the entrance. Um, this is yeah. all underway, and it's pretty much complete mayhem. Oh, you got Hawk against Hulk. Hawk and Hulk. Hawk Hogan. There's a tag team that never happened. <laughs> Looks like we got the Yete dressed in a ninja outfit working over the the purple Power Ranger, Jerry it's Lynn. It's going to be hard to not call the giant big show. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, th- I mean, th- I, th- I think the worst part about this match, as far as the execution, is the way that they did the cameras. Because you've yeah, got... that's too far away. You've got a triple split camera whenever they're all in three rings. And apparently whenever the action ends in one ring, everybody has to move into the next ring. Mm-hmm. But they're also able to move between rings at will, I think, as we see... Uh, Arn Anderson and Rick Flair. Arn and Rick are just beating the crap out of Sting here. Yeah, it never, it really confused me. Oh, looks like the Yeti is out of there, but he's dressed in a ninja outfit for some odd reason. Of course, super ninja, right? I think so. Yeah, I think that was what he ended up being. But they still called him the Yeti. Didn't I mean? God, what a stupid gimmick! They called him the Giant Ninja or something. That's right, it was the Giant Ninja. The Super Ninja was on Saturday night's main event against the Ultimate Warrior. That's right. I'm getting my wrestling mixed up here. Giant Ninja. Giant well, it's Ninja. Not, it's hard not to when you got all these guys mixed in from the 80s. Right. Nasty boys, you always got to love them. And by the way, listeners of the Brawl for All, we plan on doing a lot more like laid-back commentaries like this on some matches. We're always sitting around doing nothing anyway, so... Right, and hey, if you guys out there listening have any requests for you, matches you want us to do commentary on, uh, drop us a comment below. We'll be more than happy to take requests. As Dave Sullivan is out of there, Lord Steven Regal putting the boots to him and entering right back into the ring in ring three. Well, we got to state that uh, it's not your uh, run-of-the-mill commentary, I'd say. It's more like analyzation. Eh, yeah, yeah. there might be about certain things and... Yeah, man, absolutely. I think points and it's it's part talking about the match and part just talking uh, talking wrestling and reminiscing on uh, old wrestling. Yeah, but we will call spots. Absolutely. If uh, I mean, obviously, in this battle royal here, uh, Big Bubba has Hogan. Hogan has Bubba backed up against the corner now. Oh yeah, those guys are working easy over there. Uh-oh. Looks like uh, we got uh, Pillman. No, who is that? No, nah. I don't know who the hell that was. The Giants. So- Giant so he's working over Macho. Oh, and the giant chopping the hell out of the Disco Inferno. Macho selling for Zodiac. How about that? Bobby Eaton hanging on by a thread. One man gang blasting oh. him in the head there. Look at Bobby Bobby's Eaton. making his buddy Big Bubba look good. Look at that. They got a split screen and it's both in the same ring. So Yeah, know. this was kind of wonky here with this split screen, man. I don't know. Bunkhouse Buck out there. Bunkhouse Buck, Jimmy Golden. That's an old oh, favorite. Dirty Dick Slater hooking it up Dirty with Dick. Lord Rev- Steven Regal. Let's not forget his run as the Rebel, Dick Slater. The Rebel, that's right, in WWF. <laughs> Coming out with a uh, Rebel flag as a cape. Yeah. He actually got a, a t shirt back in the day. Yeah, yeah he got a shirt. He uh, he got a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a push. I want one of them shirts, Rebel Dick Slater, if I can find one. Uh, I always preferred Dirty Dick Slater just because the name Dirty, Dirty Dick, Dick always made me laugh as a kid. Michael Wall Street when uh he abandoned the IRS uh attire. 
Yeah, this was the closest he could get to uh, a million dollar man gimmick without ripping it off. Mr. Wall I'm, Street. I'm surprised he just didn't wear the IRS suit still. Yeah, I mean, you would think that he would. Well, Big Boss Man tried to wear the Big Boss Man suit. Oh, so yeah. I didn't get over, so I'm thinking. Well, they basically didn't allow, I mean, they sent a cease and desist, to my knowledge. Well, the thing about it is, is that if you don't remember this, he was Michael Wall Street before he was IRS, so. Was he? They, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He had as Mr. Wall Street in WCW in like That's, the early 90s, late 80s. He was, he was part of the York Foundation. Yes, Michael Wall Street. Well, he had his own thing going, too. That's right. That's right. Well, he was, of course, he had the varsity club. They and, called uh, him Mr. Wall Street. Yeah, he went from wearing a captain's hat to being. Uh, Wall Street. Mm, and Wall then Street. He ended up in that York Foundation thing, I think, right before he left. Yep, with Terry Taylor and uh, who else? He's, uh, Terry Terrence. Taylor. Terrence, yes, terrific Terrence Taylor. Robert Eaton. That was Eaton in that? No, no, I was uh, to... no. It was Richard Morton. Richard. R- Morton. Ricky Morton. Okay, I remember. Richard, oh, uh, Thomas Rich, right? Thomas Rich and uh, who else? There were some other people in that. Of course, uh, everybody had their name. Yeah, they like changed it to the, you know. Sophisticated Sorry. version. Oh no, Jeff. I'm surprised Rob Robert Eaton. It wasn't Robert Eaton in it. I don't think so, man. I think Bobby Eaton. I don't, I don't think that came until the Blue Bloods. Unf- Earl Robert Eaton. Right? That's right. Yeah. Unfortunately, my one of my favorite tag teams here, Jeff, the State Patrol, has been eliminated from the World War Three. These rings are starting to kind of thin out. Looks like guys are falling out left and right. Let's not forget about Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker's run as Braun the Leprechaun. Oh, jeez. Look at how tiny Mr. Wonderful's arm is compared to his other one. This was well into that injury. He started to have really, really bad atrophy on his right side. His right arm is just way smaller than his left. You can tell. But oh. he still beat the crap out of Vader, apparently in Look at Alex Wright that guy against the ropes. There. Alex Wright trying to take out what appears to be Pistol Pez Watley. He's a uh, old right. salty vet. Main event anywhere in the country, as Gorilla Monsoon would say. Ooh, Big Ming chopping away at one of the Armstrongs there. Big Bubba going to lose his shirt. This was, you know, Ming was pretty much a bad dude in WCW at this point. I think he had a... Did he have a U.S. title run? Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. I think he did. I remember he had... Uh, yeah. I do remember a main event match of Ming versus Sting and being amused by that. Well, Big Bubba barely hanging on. There goes his suspenders. Those things are toast. This was when Sting was about ready to get rid of the blonde hair. Yeah, he was starting to grow it out a little bit there. He started '96. It really got uh, he stopped Remember dying. It got, it. it got long and dark with the bright colors for a while. Yeah, that's right. Eddie Guerrero pounding away there on uh, Mister Wonderful in the corner. You got Bobby Eaton trying to eliminate uh, Brian Pillman with, I believe that's Kurosawa. One of my favorites all time there, Double A Art Anderson working the leg. Oh yeah, love Double A. Hell of a hand. Hell of a hand, son. Lex Luger's out of there. Lex Luger and his uh, narcissist bands that he's still wearing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got these. That came from the All American gimmick. Yeah. Wear that before that in WCW. I don't don't think he did. Never did. I got this great idea. I'm going to put tape around my biceps, make them look bigger. (laughs) Uh, We got. uh, Am my in my eyes playing tricks on me, or is? That Mr. JL. That is Mr. JL, the purple Power Ranger, Jerry I missed, Lynn. I missed him coming out of there. You know, Mr. JL had some pretty damn good matches on those early Nitros in the cruiserweight division. He actually had a match against Sabu in WCW. That's right, he did. There's the one man gang. I, I always loved him. Oh, yeah, the OMG. Always a uh, fan of him. He's 747. The 747. He's There's a, the Quakester, a.k.a. the Sharkster. The Shark. He was past Avalanche at this point, onto the Shark. Uh, yeah, he was Avalanche was his Quake rip-off gimmick. Yeah. They as close as they could, you know. Avalanche was as close as they could get. I liked it. It was good. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the big Dungeon of Doom members. Kamala, the Zodiac, 
Hugh Morris. I didn't like Shark as good as Avalanche, though. No. Do you remember whenever John Tenta got attacked by the Dungeon of Doom and they shaved half his shaved hair half his head, yeah. and half of his beard? That was always pretty funny. And he's like, I'm not a shark. I'm a man. That was pretty hilarious, I gotta say. Great promo there. Shark. Big Bubba, don't look into the camera, buddy. Break the fourth wall. Chris Benoit working over Macho Man Randy Savage in the corner. Who's that jobber just got eliminated. That That's would be Max candle. Muscle. Oh. Max Muscle. I think he used to team with Cactus at one point. No, that was Max Payne. Uh, no, Max Muscle, That I, I remember. He was Diamond Dallas Page's bodyguard. That was not, I don't think that was Muscle. They're what your boy from, uh... Fidel Sierra, yeah, one of the Barrio brothers. There goes look one of the Wade, Armstrongs. Wade letting his, or look at Hogan letting his buddies work him over. Yeah, hang me upside down, brother. Old Dirty Dick out of Tampa. Dick and Quake. Oh, yeah. There's there's Bubba working him. Bubba grabbing a hold there. Oh, there's two or three of us. Well, I don't know if him and Slater were boys, but I know Bubba and Quake were boys. Oh, yeah. Hogan, I mean, Hogan pretty much brought in all of his people Every, here. Everyone, Duggan. Oh, Craig. Duggan, too, in the corner. Craig and Pitbull. all the nasty boys. Pitbull Pittman just threw out hard work Bobby Walker. Uh-oh. That's uh, another main event anywhere in the country. Who's the uh, Puerto Rican? That's the other half of the Barrio Brothers, and his okay, name right. escapes me at the moment. Uh, but he the, is out of yeah. there. Nevertheless, there goes Stevie. Stevie Ray out of there, and oh, Brian, Brian Nobbs. Nobbs gone. Stinger hanging on there, skinning the cat. Stinger going to the ropes. That's never a good move. Going right after the Giant. Look at Sting. This is when the Giant was big and had ability. Oh, man. This was pretty early into his career. I mean, his first match was the month prior, and he won. He yeah. defeated Hogan for the championship. He was green as goose shit in this match. Throwing drop kicks off the top rope and everything after a while. Well, there goes old dinosaur Fast Pez Wonder Watley and Doss Wonderkind. Yeah. There's the loose cannon going off. Yeah, Brian Pillman. You know what I always thought was interesting as a no? What's that? He never did uh, drop his four horsemen tights, even in the WWE. That's right. He still had the uh, the deal on there. You know, I always liked Benoit and Pillman as a tag team. I was always a fan of them. Oh, they could have been badass in uh, WWF as a tag. Oh, man, no question, no question. Looks like these rings, okay. The referee in one of these rings is making everybody go to the next ring. We got Lex Luger, Eddie Guerrero, the Giant, Sting, uh, Mike, Mike Winter, Arn Anderson. Uh, that might not even that might be Italian. I don't even know who that was. But there goes the Giant. They're moving over to ring another ring, ring two, ring one. Tino Heat still in it. Yeah, still Rick in Blair there. with his uh, Spartan look or whatever the hell. Yeah, Spartan the sh look. the short haired. No, he had the. The Spartacus deal came in like 1990, 91, I think. When he had him cut his hair like that, he said he was embarrassed to walk through the airport. Uh, yeah, well, he looked like a complete doofus. Nobody knew who he was. I mean, it's bad enough to have, like, blonde granny hair, but... They wanted to put a diamond earring in his ear and call him Spartacus. That sounds absolutely terrible. Jim Hurd. Jim Hurd, the pizza. Is that uh, William Regal up there? That's yeah. no, no, not quite, sir. That is Lord Stephen Regal Squire to you. Squire Stephen. No, Regal. no, 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 no. That's Squire David Taylor, Lord okay, that's, Lord that's Stephen Squire Regal. Squire David Taylor. I meant. Yes, you had the Squire, the Earl, and the Lord, the Blue Bloods. Yes, but before that, Jean Paul Levesque was in there. That's right, that's right. Levesque and uh, Regal had a little deal going there. They were the original Blue Bloods. Yep, that's right. And then uh, once Levesque left... I don't left, think they really called themselves the Blue Bloods, but right when he left, that's when they put Eaton with them. Yeah, yep. They were going to really give them a run. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Blue Bloods were always pretty reliable for having good matches, that European style. I mean, Bobby well, Eaton, I, I too. I to check out more matches of him and Regal as a tag. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, two great wrestlers. Ric Flair and Sting are not eliminated here, I don't believe. They're just fighting outside the ring. They kind of have been the whole match. I'm guessing Levesque was gone by this time. Yeah, he, uh, let's see. He had been... He went to WWE, WWF in, right after WrestleMania 11. 
which would have been in April of 95, so he had been gone for eh, about six months or so by this time. Something somewhere thereabouts. All right, well, I guess they're going to put everybody in one ring now, maybe? They got to get rid of this triple screen, though. This shit is killing me. Yeah. Jeez Louise. I mean, it's cool if you can kind of look between all of the different screens and see different stuff, but it's a lot better in split screen, and then eventually, of course, they go to just one screen. I almost wish they would have just kept it on one screen and went, be went between all the different rings rather than the uh, three split screens here. Although I have to say, it kind of reminds me of playing GoldenEye multiplayer on N64. <laughs> Macho Man and DDP. Yeah, those guys had a hell of a feud, man. There we go. We're down to the single shot, mercifully. DDP, uh, in his uh, pre-over days. Yeah, this was... Uh, right around when he started. This is whenever he was feuding... Well, no, I guess it was before. This was pre-Booty Man. Booty Man and DDP, they had a hot feud there. Let me tell you. Love Booty Man. Booty Man stole Kimberly from DDP, and apparently Kimberly won the lottery or something. Like, I do, like do, you, do you remember that deal? That whole deal there? I don't remember Booty Man's run. It was really, really stupid. <laughs> I remember Zodiac more than I do Booty Man. I remember him. The Booty Man was terrible. The best thing about Booty Man was Nitro Girl Kimberly before the Nitro Girls. Wasn't watching enough WCW then, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty heavy into my WCW days back then. I mean, growing up in Knoxville, that was prime WCW territory, but I was always more of a WWF guy. But it was kind of like all of my friends watched more WCW. Finally, we're all in one ring here. Oh, no. Craig Pitbull Pittman with the Code Red, I believe, arm breaker. That was his finisher. Nice. Terrible, terrible. Johnny B. Bad hanging in there. Lex Luger, Kurosawa. Humorous. Who's that out of there? Was that Joey Mags? No. Kurosawa. One Man Gang is still in it. Pillman and Hogan going at it. Joey Mags, that's who it was. Jumping Joe. Great, great mullet on Joey Mags. 29 men are left. If this was a Royal Rumble, it would just be getting uh, underway. Talk about value WCW gives you. 60 guys in three rings. How about that? We're going to beat them. Yeah, right? We're going to win the Monday Night War. It's kind of fascinating to see this. I mean, it's so early into the whole Monday Night War deal. Yeah. You know? They didn't know what they were doing yet, right? Not quite. I mean, it took them about another six months till they really started getting stuff together. Got out of that Dungeon of Doom stuff. Oh, there! no, Bubba hangs on. Bubba trying to skin the cat, but no way. Looks like Booker and Hacksaw... Two WWE Hall of Famers there. Working away on Big Bubba. Is the Big Boss Man in the WWE Hall of Fame? I don't think so, bud. That is a travesty. He now, should be. Now he's out of there, eliminated. Old Hacksaw looks like he pulled the... Yep. Pulled the tape out of his tights and got that taped fist. Classic Hacksaw Duggan. Uh-oh. Oh, I remember. Hacksaw and Bubba had a... Carson City Silver Dollar match on this pay-per-view, I think. Mm. Earlier in the night. So those two were in the middle of a big feud. Ah. And, uh, of course, as we just saw, Big Bubba pulled out Hacksaw. So that feud keeps moving on from World War Three. Old Sergeant Craig Pittman up in there still. Craig the Pitbull Pittman hanging in there. He had a figure in. Yeah, I remember that. You know, those those that era of WCW figures... Like the solid, molded plastic yeah, ones? Yeah, they were hard to find. The ones that look like the glue. Exactly. They were the exact same body styles as the glue figures. Like, but were they made of the same rubber material? I don't know, but I, I almost feel like maybe WCW might have owned those molds to the figures. 
Yeah. And they, like, blew them up or something. I, I don't know, but they were really, really similar similar in every, pretty much every feature. I mean, if you go back and look at Even them. Even the size, right? No, 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 no. The The Galoobs were way smaller, the earlier ones. Okay. And then... Look a lot alike. I think, it, I think they were made by San Francisco Toy Makers. Or made, right. Now, who was it? It was Toy Makers. Okay. And it was right around this time. Yeah. Right around this time. I here. wish I had that collection. Man, those things, I remember uh, whipping one of those at one of my buddies one time who pissed me off. Toy Makers? Yeah, those big... I, I never mean, had any of them. Those things were huge, dude. I mean, the the ones you were talking about, the Craig Pitbull... Well, there's Ric Flair's ass crack. They, ha- they had the ones that... I remember having one of the diesel ones that vibrated. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the vibrating WCW figures. Trying yeah, to uh, market toward women, I guess. I still have that. I should show that in a video. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I, I Dude, I got a ton of those one year for Christmas. And I remember being like, why did you guys buy me these? These things suck. Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> a little Sully in there. And he just got tossed no, by the Hulk. one of them vibrating figures. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you were actually upset at your parents about a gift, man. I mean... Well, the problem was, is I collected the Hasbros and Galoobs. And by this time, I had, like, all of them. And that was, I mean, that was my jam. Yeah, so, but they didn't have them by that time, did they? This was right after those had kind of faded out and before Jax right. took over the WWF license. So, really, those Toy Makers figures were kind of the only ones around that were new for a while. But... Yeah, man. I mean, as far as playability, I couldn't really play with my other wrestling figures with them. You have any left? I don't think I have any of those left. I have a few Galoobs and a few Hasbros, but... No Toy Makers. No, I think I may have the Toy Makers Ring, which I do remember buying that came out around this time, because it specifically because it had a steel cage. There goes DDP and Johnny B. Bad. John, this, oh right, man. this was right before Johnny B. Bad. Whoa! Look at that bump by Craig Pitbull Pittman. He just dove right out. Holy crap. Vince loved that Johnny B. Bad gimmick. Oh, yeah. Vince was a big fan of that. That's why he got Mark Marrow in there. I understand Pat Patterson was, too. <laughs> Benoit out of there. Small Benoit. Yeah, 1995 Benoit. Same with with Eddie. Oh, yeah. These guys are just getting started, really, in WCW. One-man gang working over the Hulkster. Those guys faced off more than a few times over the years. And there goes Kurosawa, eliminated by Ming. I think those guys tagged up a time or two. Hugh Morris still in there. Let's see. Who is the odd man out here? The Zodiac is still in. Hawk's still in. Road Warrior Hawk's still in there. Hugh Morris, Arn Anderson. Oh, I mean, this is pretty much all mid to upper level guys still in there. There goes the original, Ming. The original OMG's in there still. This kind of looks like a 1988 Battle Royal. Yeah, it looks like a 1988 WWF Battle Royal. I mean, uh, pretty much. 88, 89 with a couple of other new guys WCW had, but I mean... You got Brutus Beefcake. Yeah, you got Eddie Guerrero, Savage, um, Sting. Sting. You got Hogan. Mm. You got Mr. Wonderful still in there. Ric Flair, Road Warrior. I mean, these are all. Look at it. They had a hell of a roster. There goes the Zodiac. Brother Bruda. They could have used this roster good at this time. It would have been good. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point they were still trying to do the copy WWF thing. And, yeah. Uh, Really, before the NWO, there goes Hugh Morris. We're uh, getting all these guys out of here pretty, pretty quick. That was humorous. That was very humorous. Eddie Guerrero just got blasted in the face by Lex Luger, as he had Arn Anderson in the abdominal stretch. Man, Kensuke Sasaki barely, barely hanging on there. Brian Pillman. And there goes Pillman and Kinsu- nope Kinsuke and Pillman Road Warrior Hawk trying to save Kinsuke Sasaki, his tag team partner Pillman trying to pull him out. We got a tug of war here. Looks like uh, the Chinese buffet that I saw the other day. Two people fighting over a stick of teriyaki. 
Road Warrior Hawk is really, really trying to keep... Uh, oh, no! Hogan dumps out go. Road Warrior Hawk and the Power Warrior, Kinsuke Sasaki. There you go. Hogan goes right after Mr. Wonderful. Those guys picking right up where they left off in 87. Ooh, Stinger hitting the Giant with some uh, Stinger splashes and hits Eddie Guerrero. Oh, no. Eddie's gone. Eddie's just barely hanging on there. The Giant. Looks like the Giant's smelling blood here, though. Eddie getting over in this, though, getting down to the nitty-gritty here. There goes Orndorff. And look at that sell by Orndorff. (laughs) He's so wonderful. Great theme. There goes Macho Man down on the ground. Yeah, we got Flair. We got Luger. Arn Anderson, Eddie Guerrero, Macho Man Randy Savage, Sting, One Man Gang, The Giant, and Hulk Hogan. Eddie Guerrero nearly being eliminated here. The Enforcer. Arn Anderson and Eddie Guerrero, man. I gotta go back and see how many matches those guys have. Great flying dropkick from Guerrero. Ric Flair's right there to lock him in the figure four, though. Got the Giant. Laying away on Sting there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sting coming to the rescue of Eddie Guerrero here. They got Eddie in the figure four, and Arn Anderson came back there and laid a hole on him. Stinger went and pulled him off, and now he's working the Scorpion Deathlock, trying to, on Arn Anderson and gets cut off by Flair. Did they tag Sting and Hogan a lot? I seem to remember a lot of Sting and Hogan tags. It was kind of like a uh, they had common enemies usually most of the time. Right, because the feud between those guys would have been cool even then. Oh yeah, I mean they had a couple matches, Sting and Hogan babyface matches, but uh, basically in these days it was Dungeon of Doom and Horsemen against like Sting, Hogan, and the good guys. I've never seen any babyface matches. Yeah, right there. Hogan and Sting working together on Flair. Eddie Guerrero is out of there. they have any title matches back then? Hogan and Sting? Yeah. I think so. I think they had a couple. Return Crow? I I think so, man. They may have. Sting dishing out Stinger splashes left and right. So we do have a 1988 Battle Royal with Big Show. Giant, yeah, yeah, Andre. playing the part of Andre the Giant will be because Paul everybody White. else in there was WWF between like eighty eight and ninety two. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, everybody in there right now was in W. Everybody in there right now, except for the Giant, was prior to this in the WWF. Yep. Is Luger out? I think Luger's he went. No, nah, I think he went between the ropes. Macho Man. Got his arm, elbow in a wrap there. This might have been around the time he had one of those bad infections. Oh no! Well, we got it. We got to disclude Sting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Sting also, of course, never went to WWF during those days. Oh, here we go. The spike pile driver attempt from the Horseman. Sting reverses it. Slingshots double A into Ric Flair, who was on the top, and he's out. Hogan with the clothesline and takes out double A, and Flair is pissed. He's looking for mean Gene Okerlund for some kind of answers, and Okerlund uh, has got nothing for him. What's he going to tell him? Alright, there goes the horseman. Now we're down to the one-man gang, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, Sting, Luger, and the Giant. So we got... I think at this point Luger was like a tweener. He was friends with Sting... But his manager was Jimmy Hart, and I think he might have been in the Dungeon of Doom or something. Can't really remember. Sting and Luger are uh, double-teaming the Giant with the big running clotheslines. Can they get him out of there? He's just bare. Here comes Hogan for a little reinforcement. Hogan eliminates the whole mess of them. Hogan just eliminated oh, Giant's L- gone. Giant. Hogan just eliminated the Giant. Sting and Lex Luger all in one fell swoop. Giant scoops him underneath. Hogan is not out yet. Not yet. So we're down no, to... No. We're down to Savage, Hogan, and... No! Savage wins! 
Savage has eliminated the one-man gang, and apparently the referees didn't quite see it. Hogan well, went through the ropes. The top rope. How about that? Hogan is... What? The bell's ringing. Oh, man. Hogan is not happy here, Jeff. A uh, little bit of controversy here. Pee Wee Anderson kind of missed this one, huh? The Huckster and the Nacho Man. Yeah, this is uh, prime fodder for those skits, pretty much. A couple months before those aired. Which, I mean, these guys still had drawing power, but it couldn't yeah. help. I mean, like we said, it kind of feels like a mid-80s deal. Yeah, Late it does. 80s, Oh, I, I even said they're trying to steal all the old WWF guys back oh, yeah. then. Oh, yeah. Well, it doesn't look like the referee's decision is going to get reversed here, Jeff. I think that's the end of World War Three. Macho Man Randy Savage. It looks oh, like... Hey. Macho Man Randy Savage. The late, great Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. Gene Okerlund is on the scene here. Uh-oh. And that even felt WWF-like when they had Mean Gene. Of course. And they had Bobby Heenan on commentary. Right. Mean Gene looking to get that hotline scoop real quick. Michael Buffer standing <laughs> by to... Scheme Gene, you mean. Yes, that's right. Michael Buffer at ringside ready to make an announcement and earn the other half of his paycheck. Hey, you can't blame a guy trying to earn a, a make a buck. Yeah, can't blame old Buffer. There it is. Savage is your World War III 1995 winner and, and world heavyweight champion. That's right. There it is. Hogan. Well, it's just like the Mega Powers have reunited. Yeah, Hogan. Hogan's you know a little little mad here, but he's gonna let it slide. It looks like. Oh, whoa. Grabbing a hold of Mean Gene. Pleading his case. Getting a little hillish there, Hogan. Yeah, Hogan. Showing a little attitude. He's a little little angry here. More than usual. Hogan got cheated, brother. Savage don't care, though. Give me that title. If I'm not mistaken, this was Randy Savage's first WCW championship. Maybe... I think so, and you know, I gotta say, that big gold belt does look great around Savage's waist, like it belongs. Yes, it, yes, it, 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 it looks like it really belongs, you know, uh, like it, I don't know. Sometimes yeah. sometimes the belts just fit right with a certain wrestler's look. Yeah, it does. I always thought Batista did. I always thought Hogan looked strange with that belt on. Yeah. After so many years of uh, the winged eagle belt. As opposed yeah. to an eagle without wings. Uh huh. So that's pretty much it here, Jeff. We got a. Uh... Well, I appreciate everybody for tuning in and watching World War Three, the main event, the sixty-man three-ring battle royal. Me and C Dub appreciate you tuning in as always. Uh, yeah, there'll be more to come on the commentaries too. Most deaf. Make sure to check out Chrono Cord over on YouTube. Make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Brawl for All. Drop us a comment, like we said earlier. Give us some requests. Yep, because we'd be happy to watch anything that you guys request. And, yeah, make sure you sub the Brawl for All. Leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out Chrono Cord too. I'll leave the description below, as always. Uh, so, you know, I guess we're going to have to tell them peace out here. It looks like that's all from World War Three, my friend. Yep, Hogan and Mach. And Gene. There it is, brother. All right, peace out, everybody. Peace. peace.